everyone. Um, so I made, I made my protein coffee, but then I was craving McDonald's, so we got McDonald's. Okay. I got a sausage egg McMuffin and a hash browns. So we are on our way to the market. It's gonna be um, with Dreamers Market, um, the market organization. And uh, it's gonna be at 2nd and PCH towards Long Beach. Um, their theme today is the Cherry Blossom Festival because I believe that's actually um, what they're celebrating in Japan right now. And so I was able to secure some last minute decorations just to kind of get into um, the spirit or the vibe theme that they're having for the market. And then also I wasn't aware till like the maybe like two days ago that it was gonna be um, anime and cosplay and weeb related and I'm super excited. So I wore my, um, my diva shirt because I didn't have any other anime related clothing except for my, I also brought my uh, my Ghibli sweater. So I'll probably wear that if I get cold. And then my boyfriend is wearing his full metal alchemist shirt. You'll probably see it later. And they're gonna have, um, I believe they're called taiko drummers, uh, like the traditional Japanese um, drummers. Um, hopefully I'm kind of in the area where they will be performing because I would like to see that uh, while I'm vending but if not then maybe I'll be able to take a walk around and um, show you later on if not it's okay but super exciting and they have um, they have like a cosplay contest that's going on the whole day I think they'll be announcing um, winners every hour so I'm kind of excited to see all the cosplayers um, Which reminds me last week when I was at the um, Long Beach uh, market on Sunday my mom was pointing out to people who were cosplaying and she was like why do they look like that why do they look like that and I was like they're cosplaying I don't know like <laughs> I don't know why they look like that um, and maybe they were traveling or visiting from um, like a convention in the area or something like that I'm just not sure what was happening around the time um, but yeah, couldn't forget that we were near an airport, so I feel like it wasn't uncalled for. But my mom acted like it was so crazy. And I guess like being in full costume kind of is, but I like it. <laughs> okay, so that's a check-in. Um, it's 9.46. We have to get to the market area by 10.30 to start setting up. And the market starts at 12 today and will last until six. They actually extended it from 12, uh, from 12 to five to 12 to six. So we'll have an extra hour to um, be there. And I have never been to this venue before, so I just wanted to check it out and see what it's like. And also um, check out and see what the market organizer is like. And I will update you guys later. <laughs> setting up the table with my boyfriend um, the event organizers kept moving us down because they added two extra vendors between the photo op area and our booth and so my setup was actually supposed to be an L shape um, in a different direction but I just went ahead and went with my usual setup
we're all done setting up and it's a little windy here but the setting is very nice um i think it's almost 12 it's like 11 something 11 40 or something like that and i think everyone is almost set up too and hello hi <laughs> okay, yeah, and what else? Um, it's kind of chilly, but I think I'll survive because there's a lot of sun. We're just under the umbrella. probably do a walkthrough in a little bit because not everyone is done setting up. Maybe when the market starts. Alright, see you then. <laughs> Is that your eyes? Alright. 
Thank you. Farm payment. I can take cash card, Apple Pay. Okay. Do you want a bag? Yes, please. Yes? How much is that? That one is 25 And that's actually, um, if you take this card, go ahead and take this card because it's from our Dreamers Market. Um, you get, I think you bring it to their booth, which is right next to that wall right here, um, that little picture wall. Um, and then you can get a free um, cotton candy or a free oh. churro. Yeah. Oh, I want a churro. <laughs>
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first ever Cherry Blossom Festival on 2nd and PCH. My name is James. This is Joanne, Tomoko, Brandon, Ken, Ron, and Mickey, and we are Kokoro Taiko. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Cycle is a Japanese drumming group based in Long Beach at the Long Beach Japanese Cultural Center on Seabright Avenue. We've been around since 1990, since our founding from Victor Fukuhara. Now, you may be wondering, what is Taiko? Taiko by itself is the Japanese word for drum and encompasses the Japanese style of drumming. Now, Taiko has a long history in Japan, spanning over 2,000 years. It first started off as a single drum used to scare away evil spirits and the pests terrorizing the farmer's fields. It was then brought in to shrines and rituals, shrines, shrines for rituals, I'm sorry, to the battlefield for communication and entertainment in festivals and theaters. Now, the song that we just played was called Utsu Hachijo. Utsu Hachijo is a song made popular by a taiko group called Onde Koza in 1960s. It hails from Hachijo Island. Now, Hachijo Island is a place where exiled samurai and criminals were sent to back in the day. So it is thought that this particular song was inspired by these samurai giving up their drumsticks, giving up their samurai swords, I'm sorry, and picking up drumsticks and using song to express their longing for the homeland. Now, our next song that we will be playing today is called Hibiki. Hibiki is a Japanese word for echo. So much like an echo, you will hear patterns repeated over and over and over again. Our style of Hibiki is done in Yodan Uchi style, meaning hitting of the four sides, which was made popular by Sukuroku in the 19... By Sukuroku. As you can see, the way we configure our drums is so that four sides of the drum can be hit at one time. This allows our drummers to have a more dynamic performance. Sounds interesting, right? Yeah? Sounds good? Sounds good? So, we hope you enjoy our rendition of Hibiki.
All right, let's give our drummers one more round of applause, please. Okay, so all the styles we are playing for you today are called kumidai, which means drumming as an ensemble. As I mentioned before, taiko was used as a single drum used for a specific purpose. It wasn't until 1950s a man named Daihachi Oguchi created this kumidaiko style. Daihachi Oguchi was a western drum jazz player and he was tasked to transcribe a very old piece of music. Now when he did so, the song was a little bit too easy, too simple for him. So using his experience as a jazz player, he decided why not put all these different styles of drumming and put them into a song and have them all played together, which led to Kumidaiko. So as you can see, we have many different styles of drums that we brought today. We have these big drums, they're called Odaikos. Odaikos have a very deep, rich sound, just like the bass of a Western style drum set. We also have our Chu Daikos. Our Chu Daikos have a higher pitch, which are much like the tom. And then we also have the very small, very high pitch drum right here called the Shime Daiko, which is very much like the snare of a Western style drum set. Now, our last piece that we'll be playing for you today is called Miyake. It was made popular by a group named Koro, and it hails from Miyake Island. Now, on Miyake Island, they have this festival called Gozu Tenosai, which is a festival they use to honor their deity, Gozu Tenno. And the way they do this is they have portable shrines that they process throughout the island and they play the same pattern over and over and over again from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the pattern is sit don 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 So if you can imagine playing this pattern over and over and over it sounds very difficult, right? No, I barely have the energy to do the songs today. But the people in Japan, they are very, very strong and it comes with a very strong sound. So with that, we hope that you enjoy our rendition of Miyake.
Okay, thank you guys for having us today. Please enjoy the rest of the festival. There's a lot of booths and a lot of activities for everyone to do. Again, if anyone is interested in learning and playing taiko, we practice on Saturdays from 1 to 3. Please contact one of us. And with that, we hope we, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Hi, great. Arigatou gozaimashita. I think that you are free. You just gotta wait at this short line and have your own phone. Or Aww. <laughs> You're adorable. I should have one of these, but oh, I don't. Really? I don't have it in my car though. Yeah. I know. My dad doesn't. Hey. Everyone has them. I know. Yeah. My dad won't let me. Do it. I fall too. <laughs> it's so good though. I can't believe it. 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 Um, here at Second and TCH. It's kind of like a mall venue kind of thing or like um, little shops that are all around. We tried this one Italian place um, and the food was really good and I'm like stuffed. Um, and we also got fries from Shake Shack because I was craving french fries. Um, but yeah, I'd say overall the market was really good. Um, there was a lot of foot traffic. There'd be um, times of rushes and then um, like slow times as well so it was good like a little bit of a breather um, but yeah I will go over numbers once I get back home um, and I'll include a before and after picture as always hi okay so we are at the end of the video here we are going to talk about um, uh, how much I made in sales, my total profit. Um, I actually tallied up what items sold out um, and like how many of each item I sold uh, because I, I don't know, I was just wanting to see some numbers. Um, and this is for the market on April 27th at 2nd and PCH. So I'll just get into it right now. Um, in cash sales, I made $131. In card sales, I made $470. In Venmo, I made $22. And in Zelle, I made $40. Um, the fees were kind of high for uh, this market just because we did end up um, spending a lot of money on food because we wanted to just try out what was in the area. And the venue itself was kind of pricey. So venue fees were $175. And um, food was about $50. And I did have my boyfriend with me to help. So I did pay for his food as well. And then parking was $10 or was supposed to be $10 and they gave us a voucher um, to claim it to be $10. But when we put our parking ticket in, um, we got the $30. So we had to call the uh, parking attendant and I, I think they just didn't want to deal with us. So <laughs> they just um, rang the, the little thing and then just let us through. So I guess we got parking for free. Um, with that all taken into account, my total profit at 2nd and PCH was... $428 so yay pretty good so I was already kind of like I felt kind of fairly busy at the market um this time around so I think that um I really liked the venue it it gave a lot of like chill vibes people were really nice um there were a lot of um like onlookers like people who would kind of step away and not come and look I would still greet them, you know, with a little hello, but I wouldn't really persuade them to come in unless they something seemed to catch their eye, if you get what I mean. Anyways, let's talk about, oops, sorry. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's talk about what items sold out. I had two items that sold out. 
I sold out of my capybaras. I only had five available, but I did make six. Unfortunately, I gave one, well, not unfortunately, I did give one of the six capybara that I made this week to my coworker for her baby shower. So I hope that her little baby likes that. And then um, I also sold out of the little cats that I make um, and I made five of those. So yeah, and then just like a few of the items tallied. Um, I don't know if this is actually all the items I sold because I think there were some points where I didn't write down what I um, sold. So don't quote me on this. But I sold three bees, six octos, five capybara, two sprout clips, um, three chubby frogs, five cats, two mallard ducks, the small ones, um, four frog hat ducks, two leggy frogs, and three mystery bags. Which leads me into a little story time. I always tell the people who purchase the mystery bags from me that they are going to get items around the size of um, like the little cats or the frog hat duckies. So in between those sizes, they're about like this big. I, I, don't, I don't really know if you can. But those are my 10. Uh, those are um, the size of my 10 to $15 items. So they are getting an item that is worth. 10 to 15 dollars um this time around i charged 15 dollars uh for the mystery bags because they were selling too fast i think when i priced them at 10 um and so there were there was a guy or there was a family that came by um and his his little girl found what she wanted right away really quickly something small so it was perfect and then his little boy was like looking around taking his time and his dad was like Hey, like hurry up you gotta choose now because we gotta go and so the kid was like I want a mystery bag and he the dad prefaced it by saying are you sure you don't want something that you can see out in the open like you can see what you're gonna get if you don't choose the mystery bag but if you choose the mystery bag you don't know what's in it and what if you don't like it okay and I, I totally agree you know I Maybe I'm encouraging gambling with the mystery bags, but um, most of the time the people who choose the mystery bags are um, adults. Um, so I don't, I get a few of the kiddos wanting mystery bags, but their parents will steer them away from it just to make sure that they get something they do want. But the kid insisted that he wanted the mystery bag and so they purchased the bag. They walk a little bit of a way, but I could still see them. Um, they were still in uh, my peripherals, okay? Um, and me and my boyfriend were watching them. The kid rips open the bag and gets um, a heart. So I had made hearts about this big um, for Valentine's Day and I wanted to put them out there, you know, for the mystery bags. And I did charge about $15 for those hearts when um, Valentine's Day came around. So maybe I could have priced it down to 10, but also I let them know that I don't remember what I put inside the mystery bags. Once they're in and stapled, I don't go inside and look at them again. They're also a mystery to me. I just always give them, um, that warning or always let them know like the size of the item and you know like i don't i don't literally tell them like what it is that they could um get because i i always put like an assortment of things inside the mystery bags i don't um have like a certain type of item that i put in the mystery bags um just to make it more fun for both you and for me um but yeah it's the risk that you take when you buy the mystery bag and so um kids started crying and you know his dad was kind of letting him know like hey like I already told you that you weren't gonna know what was inside the mystery bag and you went and chose it anyway and I already paid basically um but my boyfriend was telling me like hey maybe you maybe you could like flag him down and let them know like hey um we could do a trade if they came back but they never made their way back to the table and I would have um, traded another item with them if they came back to the table. Um, but I honestly think that the dad was trying to teach the kid a lesson um, with that, that whole ordeal there. Um, but I feel like if the kid just listened to the dad, he would have avoided <laughs> that whole little upset. But I mean, 
that's kind of the point of a mystery bag, right? Like you're not supposed to know what's inside of it. Like people will always ask me like, oh, what's in the mystery bag? I'm like, I'm, why am I supposed to tell you? Like it's a mystery bag for a reason. Like you're, you're taking a gamble on this, uh, either buy it and find out or don't, you know, like that's, that's kind of how that works. Um, and so I don't know, like, uh, that's that's just my little story time on it. I don't know whether or not um, Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> that's all I can say about it um, I would have done a trade if they came back, but they didn't come back and I still think that that was a lesson learned um, The hard way, but it was a good lesson to be learned um, And so moving along, let's go ahead and talk about how I felt about the market so this venue was really nice. Um, I don't think it was very big. It's next to, it's kind of like a mall type area with pretty fancy type of stores. There was, um, there was like free people there. I think there was a Nike store, there was a Sephora, um, and then they had like lesser known brands, but I think they're like priced higher. And um, what else? I think I noticed, um, a Lululemon. I know like they're not that one's a known store, but it is like higher um higher price points, I think. And then um there was a grocery market too. They had Whole Foods around there. Um there was a Shake Shack. Um I think I sh uh showed some clips in the vlog of the food that I got. Um we did try Van Leeuwen ice cream and we also tried an an Italian um uh, we tried Italian as well and I was really like focused on this lasagna and oh my god it was so worth it ah, so good um but yeah I was placed next to a vendor where it was her second market um overall like in general and then it was her first time at that venue but um she had been with um dreamers market before and I kind of gave her um, a couple tips because she was really frazzled and I, I wanted to help her, but I also didn't want to like step into her space um, without her uh, allowing for it. You know, I, I know like um, some people want to make mistakes and learn from it um, that way, but I also don't want feel, uh, I didn't want her to feel embarrassed about um, like if I could have like stepped in to help. I did ask her. I. I would just like gently say like oh like let me know if you need some help and and like I noticed like bags were flying everywhere so I go went and grabbed her bags and just like gave it to her and then I like chatted with her a bit throughout the market and she's really sweet and I hope um a lot of success for her in the future and to just get her brand out there and I'll go ahead and insert her brand name here she's really sweet and um I hope to see her at future events and yeah I saw um, another vendor friend that I just recently made. I actually just met her at a market last week, um, I believe in Long Beach. Um, and yeah, she's a vendor as well. She, uh, let me just put her name here. And um, she sells like kitten accessories, kitty cat um, items, toys, uh, and she makes them and it's so cute. And She's so supportive and I, I somehow got her addicted to like spring spring chicken crochet and um, yeah, so <laughs> I fulfilled an order for her uh, right away so that I wouldn't forget about it right away. Uh, um, yeah, and I'm just thankful for her for coming by at the market um, a couple times to, you know, just kind of chat about the market and about um, how our businesses were doing. Um, and it's just like so great to meet you guys and finally put like faces to names and, um, you know, connect with you all because if you're like a small business, uh, owner as well, it's kind of cool to see like what your experience is or hear about your experience and then like compare in a good way, like how my experience is going as well. Like, um, I like to ask for tips or um like oh did you did you have you been at this venue before like do you know what it's like da, 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 da. like that kind of stuff um because it kind of gives me insight on like what you feel about it and um if i should come back to it and um yeah just just a whole lot of um networking and i think that's really beneficial to support each other um in our small business journeys as well 
Um, so yeah, I really liked second in PCH. I will attend again if I can find another uh, market um, that will be held there. Um, I wish I got to see the drummers, but um, my boyfriend was able to get some footage, so I watched that. And I really just enjoyed the vibes there. Um, the weather was amazing. We were like right next to the, uh, what do you call it, the coast. So there was, it was kind of windy, but it was good in the sunlight. So it was really nice. Um, but yeah. If you enjoyed this video and want to see some more market vlogs, please stay um, tuned for the next one that I will record, which will be Mother's Day weekend. I am taking a week off to attend a wedding and then I um, will, I think actually I will have a vlog posted every single week still, um, but my next market will be Mother's Day weekend and I will be having my markets at Anaheim Packing District on Friday and Saturday. So stay tuned to that vlog. And if you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, I do appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for over 500 subscribers now. I cannot believe how much this channel has grown. Um, and I want to continue to um, show you guys what my small business journey is like and just take you with me um, while I try to figure this thing out. <laughs> um, but yeah. Until the next vlog, I'll see you guys. Bye.